Mr. Hans Horst Konkolevsky is Secretary General of the International Social Security Association, also known as ESA, and I'd like to welcome you to the studio today. Thank you very much. Now, uh, we're here uh, at the ITU studio, and uh, here, obviously, uh, because uh, uh, we are very interested in technology, and I know that you are too. I wanted to ask you, what are the biggest technology challenges now facing uh, social security institutions worldwide? Well, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to this interview. Um, you might know that uh, in the social security sector, in social security administration, technology plays a key role. And over the past decade, our members, the social security administrations, these are the pension funds, the health insurances, the accident insurances, unemployment insurance, and so on, they have been focusing a lot on the technological development, partly in order to manage their own internal data processes and data management processes, but also to a much higher degree in order to provide services to their clients, their customers, their beneficiaries. And in terms of opportunities, uh, ha where do you see opportunities to overcome uh, some of the challenges that may be faced? Well, the, the challenges that this implies, and I think in particular if you open up, so to say, and uh, to your data, and both to your internal data but also to personal data, when you use mobile applications, when you use all these new platforms, uh, because we want to offer the same level of 24-7 services as our customers, the citizens of the world, are actually already being offered by other institutions like their banks or their insurances or by by even uh, their warehouses and others. So therefore, uh, we need also to look into what are the risks involved in that. So, and as you very well know, and uh, cybersecurity has become a critical issue. We have had incidents uh, with ransomware and national health services in the UK, and we had had many other incidences. So this is one of the critical issues. Also to have secured mobile interaction. As I mentioned in many regions uh, of the world, uh, the increase of coverage, because just to come with a bit of a technical ex uh, explanation about what social security challenges are, which is that still only about half of the world's population is actually covered by adequate social security. So in order to extend coverage also into remote areas, to rural areas, uh, in particular, mobile technology has shown to be fantastic, both as a means to uh, collect the contributions for uh, an insurance, for social insurance, but also to do the payments. But so we have to look into how we can secure these mobile uh, technologies and mobile security. And uh, lastly, I would like to highlight that uh, in spite of that we all are using this technology on a daily basis, there still is a rather important part and often the most vulnerable part of the population that is ex excluded from this digital life, so to say. So we have to make sure and work together with other entities as a, as a societal level, education and others, to make sure that we actually ensure that everybody can be included in this uh, fantastic digital development. Now, you've been Secretary General of the uh, uh, International Social Security Association for about 12 years now. Uh, I wanted to ask you just a little bit, of, uh, perhaps you could give us a little bit of a, a background of the of ESA and, and what are your main areas of focus on? Yeah, the ESA uh, was originally founded by the ILO in 1927, so we have reached our 90th anniversary. I know the ITU <laughs> is older than us uh, <laughs> and we respect that. But uh, our mandate has been from the very beginning is to support uh, s the extension of social protection to all. And uh, we do that uh, not in the, say, in the classical ILO way through tripartite uh, decision making and issuing uh, co recommendations and, and, con and conventions, but what we do is actually we form a kind of business network of the social security administrations. So we bring together social security administrators from more than 150 countries worldwide. Uh, we have different platforms where they meet and exchange with their peers. We have technical uh, commissions, as we call them, that develop for example, guidelines in uh, what is the best uh, way of organizing different business processes in social security administration. And we try to give them a voice, at, of course, also at the, at the global level. So we have a double objective. Uh, the most important is to serve our members, the social security administrations, in reaching excellence in administration, where technology is key, as I already mentioned. But we also want to contribute to the overall SDGs, uh, the Sustainable Development Goals, and their objectives for 2030 as regards social protection for all, health protection for all, and there we work closely with the ILO and support it. 
at the implementation level. So our focus as an association, and this we have developed over the past years, is to help our members not only through platforms where we meet and exchange, but we develop guidelines. We have a center for excellence with also an academy, and we offer support, and at the end of the process, we also offer recognitions or kind of certification of our members. So our objective is to contribute to the overall uh, goal of uh, social protection for all, by enhancing the quality of the services, and the outreach of our of our member organizations. And what are some of the examples of technology being used in the field of social security? Uh, as already mentioned, uh, we have seen an increased use of mobile technologies, uh, in particular in Africa, that is really the leading continent uh, and is an example to many other uh, social security administrations around the world, is the intelligent use of uh, mobile technology. Uh, which means, as I mentioned, that you can conduct uh, processes of contribution payment but also res receival of benefits through the mobile technology. So this has been a great uh, support of extending coverage to the difficult to reach people in the rural sector or the small communities. So this is uh, one example that we have. The other example I would like to highlight is the uh, interoperable information systems. Um, where uh, you can look into, for example, in Brazil, there is a, is a very well-known uh, social assistance program, which is called the Bolsa Familia. It's a conditional cash transfer system which supports uh, single mothers uh, on condition of that the children attend school and the children are uh, looked into as regards their health development. So in order to focus this program, you need to really have interoperable uh, data systems to reach out to the right people and also to measure, so to say, the impact of your program. So this is another very interesting uh, program that I want to share with you. Uh, a third one is uh, smart cards. Uh, so dual smart cards that can be used uh, uh, by both the banking system and the social security system. And there our number one is China. China, which by the way has led the extension of coverage. What they have achieved over the past decade is really admirable. And much of the increase of the extension of coverage over the past 10 years is simply because China's government has really focused on this uh, social extension issue. But they have not been able, they would not have been able to do that with the speed that they actually have shown without technology, without issues like smart cards and other technologies that uh, support, as I said, the process of extension, but also, and first and foremost, a very efficient way of organizing and reducing the transaction costs and organizing uh, the delivery of their services. Uh, another interesting uh, issue is big data and big data analytics. Uh, there, the uh, Republic of uh, Korea has been leading in terms of looking into particular health data. Uh, and they have developed a big data analytics system which has allowed them to be more predictive in terms of where they have to focus their health service, for example, if there are calamities uh, or other events, so that they have used this intelligence in order to focus the always limited resources to the right places. And we see also in Europe uh, an increased use of big data analytics in particular to focus on an issue that is very high on the agenda amongst our members, which is to fight error evasion and fraud. And here big data again can help us to, uh, to reduce that and to improve the quality of services. So these are s a few examples on how our members uh, already successfully work with new technologies. Yeah, leaps and bounds from uh, probably from when you first started with ESA. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and finally, I'd just like to ask you if you could tell us a little bit about the new ITU ESA collaboration. What are its aims and what do you hope it will achieve? As a first of all, I'm extremely pleased uh, that we finally <laughs> marry, <laughs> so to say. And uh, we are not far away here in Geneva from each other, but sometimes this can be uh, millions of light years. Uh, but it is really fantastic for us to discover. Uh, the power of uh, IT, the ITU, its history and its capacities. Because all the issues I have been addressing are also and have been addressed by the ITU uh, over the past decades. And you have developed a fantastic network of both private and public uh, partners in order to uh, develop international standards and to secure that technology really comes to the benefit of people. 
And uh, so we uh, expect that from this collaboration that we actually can do things together. No? Uh, we are an important uh, sector in terms of consumption of technology. Uh, so we rank amongst the top three worldwide. And uh, therefore, I think we are an interesting partner uh, because of the outreach that we can offer. On the other hand, we are very much interested in your intelligence and your knowledge, your experts, which already have demonstrated their abilities at our last uh, information communication technology conference this year in Casablanca. And everybody was very impressed, and everybody, of the, so everybody means ESA members, supported very much the idea of developing closer collaborations uh, with you. So we expect that we together can uh, develop uh, guidelines as regards these critical areas that we need to, to cover. That we also try to see not only to look at the challenges, but also the opportunities of the new, uh, of the new technologies. We are reaching now into the digital age uh, and there are lots of uh, also possibilities of making use of technology to deliver our services in a more efficient, cost efficient way and in particular with better governance and better service quality. So uh, we expect that machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence and these issues in a positive sense can also uh, address our, our challenges as an ESA, as I said, which is to reach excellence. So we see you as a fantastic partner and we look very much forward to common events, uh, common reports, common research and exchange. Uh, uh, we expect that this partnership would actually contribute to our objective, which is to help our members to reach excellence in social security administration. Well, here's looking forward to a long and fruitful collaboration. Hans Horst Koskolewski, thank you very much indeed for being with us today. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.